My name is Scott Kemp. I'm a regional officer for United the Union in the South East region, and I currently have regional responsibility for our members working in government, defence, prisons, and contractors, the two ambulance trusts across the South East, and also all the managerial grades in rural Mail. As a union, we look after a number of different sectors. So we'll represent anyone from automotive workers to health workers, people working in the IT sector, we represent faith workers, we represent care workers, we represent absolutely anyone that you can think of in employment. Unite is, is organised there and we also have sectors that will accommodate everyone. So it's really important that you are aware of the broad basis on which trade union is based. So our job fundamentally as a union is to represent our members' interests and ensure they have an effective and influential voice at work. And this can take a number of different forms. So for instance, it can mean negotiating terms, conditions and pay, collective agreements, consulting with employers on things such as redundancies, pension changes or two transfers. In short, we will represent and negotiate on behalf of our members on anything that has a day to day impact on their working lives. And likewise, that means we will also represent members as individuals. So if, for instance, we have a member that wishes to raise a grievance because they've been suffering bullying and harassment at work or they've had a, an unlawful deduction from their wages, and we'll represent them through that process. If we have a member um, that is requested to attend a disciplinary hearing, look, we'll, we'll attend that and we'll ensure they are fully represented and we'll make the case on their behalf. It's not necessarily all about reactive topics. We also ensure that we are a progressive organisation. So despite what the press and the media may say about us, we do a lot of good work in ensuring that equalities are at the forefront of what we as a trade union and employers are looking at. The skills that you need to do the job, the main skill is to be able to, be able to negotiate effectively. As a trade union, you know, we are measured by the successes that we can deliver on behalf of our members. And this can mean different things to different people. So for some people, it'll be about the fact that unions negotiated a bumper pay award. For some, it'll be about the fact that they've got the flexible working arrangements they're after. And for some, it'll be about a satisfying resolution to their grievance. So again, there is no kind of one size fits all approach as to what that looks like. You also have to be incredibly organized. You know, as officers, we look after between three to 5,000 members across a variety of different sectors. So you have to ensure like, for instance, on personal cases, you're on top of all of the details because there are strict time limits within which certain claims can be brought at tribunal. And you have to ensure you've got a good grasp of all of the details regarding industrial disputes. Because again, all of these things subject to change almost on a daily basis, sometimes an hourly basis. So you have to be organized, you have to know what you're doing and you have to ensure that you've got the full grasp of the details of the issues that you're dealing with. But you also have to be able to handle sensitive issues as well in a delicate way because we do have a lot of difficult conversations as a, as a union with our members and also with employers and we have to support people for some incredibly dark times. So you have to be able to tailor the approach to suit the individual and that's a skill that develops only really with experience and you have to ensure that members feel appropriately supported. So again, the, the main skills are negotiating, being organised and being able to deal with difficult situations in, in, in a sensitive and, and delicate way. So qualifications, I mean, there are no specific qualifications you need to become a trade union official. So it doesn't mean that you have to leave school with an A in maths and science and English and whatever. A lot of it is based around experience. When you become a trade union rep and you may become a union learning rep, you may become a safety rep, a shop steward, um, and you, or you may become an equalities rep. The union has a comprehensive training package that they, that they tailor to suit each one of those roles. So what you do is you attend courses that the union will run, um, in conjunction with, with, say, for instance, Ruskin College at Oxford, and you will then learn about legislation that underpins that role, and you learn about the type of scenarios that you will encounter in the workplace. And what you do is you take that theory that you've learned and you put it into practice in the workplace. So that kind of practice coupled with the theory is what will start to generate and build the experience that you have. And it's that really, that experience that, that you build um, that will be dependent on whether you get a job as a full-time officer or as a full-time organiser of the union. But also as a union, what we also do is we have uh, a role called a stand-down officer. So what happens, and I did this myself, so uh, my employer allowed me to be seconded to the union for a four-month period. So again, I was able to get that experience, almost like four months worth of work experience, I was able to get that experience of working as an officer. And having then done that and returned to the workplace, I felt that I was able to do the job. Some people do it and decide it's not for them. Some people do it and then they know that's exactly what I want to do. So again, there are different ways that the union could support anyone that wishes to develop to become a full-time official or an organiser. I think there are additional qualifications you can take and some officers decide to specialise in, in roles such as health and safety. 
some will decide to specialise in employment law. So there are development opportunities, but again, a lot of it will come once the role is actually taken on. Um, and a lot of that stuff you will pick up also as you go through your day to day um, role in the workplace. So prior to working for Unite, uh, I worked in the nuclear industry as a machine tools engineer. I did uh, an apprenticeship and I came out of my time in 2002. I then moved into the machine tools team. I was always what was deemed an industrial blue collar shop floor worker. Um, and I stayed there until I left to join Unite. I was lucky enough to be elected as the shop steward for my department, which was the machine tools department, which was in a huge production facility. So I was able to get really experienced very quickly. So I had to deal with uh, quite, quite a few members issues. Um, I was then elected as the craft convener, which was the bargaining unit that I represented. Um, and then over a period of time, I was elected as the branch chair, um, where I then had the negotiating responsibilities for firefighters, frontline workers and craft workers. So as, as, a, as a shop steward and then as a branch chair, I was responsible for about 900 members. Um, and it was really, really good experience. So again, that's what puts, that's what sets you in a good stead. But you can get that experience from smaller branches as well. So um, that was the role that I took really before becoming a full-time officer. There are no really fixed working hours as such. We work a nominal 34 hour week. However, you know, our contracts are very clear that the demands on us as officers will depend on the work that is coming in at the time. So for instance, we don't work nine till five. Um, we also don't have a, a regular pattern of attending an office. So our job will be dependent on the issues um, and where they are. So for instance, one day I could be in Milton Keynes, the next day I could be in Dover, the next day I could be in Southampton, the next day I could be in London, the next day I could be back down in Portsmouth. And there are no sort of fixed times. So some of those meetings could be branch meetings that are running from half seven till nine o'clock at night. You know, So our job and our hours are always dependent on the issues. And you have to be able to be flexible enough to accommodate any changes that come through disputes, for instance. So one day, you might be expecting to be Milton Keynes the next, a huge issue may, may arise and you've got to get yourself over to Gatwick. So there is no really structured way of fixing your hours like in a normal kind of nine to five job, going to the same office every day. But that, to be honest, is one of the best parts of the job. The fact that no day is the same, the fact that you get to meet uh, you know, some fabulous reps and members across the region, you get to establish these working relationships with employers and your allocation of work. So again, the benefit for me and one of my favourite parts of the job is the travelling. There are hundreds of books on trade unions, but I think one book that has been released recently that is very good was written by our General Secretary, Len McCluskey. It's called Why You Should Be a Trade Unionist. It's only a very short book, but it does give a really good overview of how the trade union movement came to be. It also gives you a good indication of what the role of a rep does. It also ensures that you know what an officer does and, and you know, Len McCluskey has held nearly every position in the union. So again, it gives a really good overview of what a trade union official's life is actually like. But it also ensures that people that read the book can get to grips with what the union's political and industrial strategy really is. So again, that's a really good place to start. If you're also looking for information about what a union role entails, and even just looking at um, a, a rep's role, such as an equalities rep or union learning rep, you know, our website, as Unite, has all of that information. And also the Trade Union Congress website has lots of information that you can look at on there. And it also conveniently gathers together all the job opportunities that all of the um, constituent trade unions under the Trade Union Congress banner are actually advertised at the moment. So again, the websites of the individual trade unions, you have lots of that information. If it's specifically jobs you're looking at and opportunities, then again, the best place to start would be at TUC Jobs. Um, or, again, if you're looking at um, taking on the roles, each individual union will have their own websites tailored to suit that. But Unite has a comprehensive amount of information available to anyone that's looking for further information. Again, the main thing really is to get active. So, for instance, if you're lucky enough to work in a workplace where you have trade union recognition, that means getting involved with your branch, getting elected as a rep, you know, doing your courses, getting that experience that I, was, I spoke about earlier. Um, but if you're, in a, in, if you're in a workplace that doesn't have a trade union, then that's a fantastic opportunity to get involved alongside your colleagues and to organise a branch and build a branch and ensure that you have trade union support in doing that. Because the only way we as a union are going to continue to build is to ensure that we move into uh, workplaces that are un, you know, unorganised and we ensure that we've got people that are willing to do that work to build the branches. So again, if you're looking to get actively involved, those are the places to start. 